Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. And today, this is take two on uh, my thoughts on the most impactful universal special rules for the old world. Um, I definitely recorded this one previously, but I definitely did it on uh, not enough sleep and migraine, so uh, it sounded like crap. So here we go. I'm going to just re-record this and drop it out to you guys. After taking a sip of coffee and trying to not cough and hack, um, let's hit it. All right, so these are just my opinions, and it's basically the things that I'm looking for in units, not necessarily what the best special rules in the game are. It's more about uh, what I think is impactful, so things that are going to be very consistently useful and also not so ubiquitous that it's just common. So, for example, something like Armor Bane, way too common to be considered here. Good ability. I think it's also not really like that super impactful anyway because of the nature of it. Um, on the flip side, something that's really good, um, but very situational monster slayer like it, it can just one shot the most powerful things in the game but it also is completely useless in a lot of games or if whatever it is that has monster slayer is not near the monsters it needs to slay so uh with that out of the way i'm just gonna kind of go through my top five in no particular order and uh see what you guys think all right, uh, Warband. Uh, I'm not going to go through and read all of this. I'm just going to give you the gist of what this does. Um, you get a bonus to your leadership equal to your rank bonus. And then uh, the thing that I think is really important here is that uh, the unit can reroll charges. That's huge. Uh, there aren't a lot of things in the old world that let you reroll charges. It's a pretty rare ability. And for infantry that are, well, and things in general that are, uh, that don't have swift stride, it getting a reroll really gets you a big boost on uh, being able to hit those charges that are a little bit longer. Um, the 2d6 drop the lowest gives you an average of uh, you know, like 4.5. So if you're able to do that reroll, um, and you're trying to hit, like, say, a five inch charge, it's going to pretty substantially increase your odds of being able to hit that, um, you know, with the 2d6 drop lowest plus being able to reroll them. So I think this is a really great ability. Um, and it's going to begin the pattern that you will quickly notice about uh, what I think are impactful rules. All right, up next, skirmishers. Um, these honestly border on too common and a little bit uh, because of the nature of like skirmish rules um, are uh, borders on not really being a universal special rule, but it, it the rules of skirmishers are triggered by a universal special rule, so I'm counting it. All right, so why is this powerful? It gives you 360 line of sight. It gives you line of sight everywhere. Very, very valuable. Your movement is 360 degrees because you don't have a unit facing. You can move in any direction. Um, and you don't have any penalties for doing that. Like, it, ordinarily, your units can still move in any direction, but you have some sort of movement penalty for that. Like, if you're going backwards, then, you know, you're moving at half movement, for example. Um, they also, uh, don't need to do any sort of reform or redress the ranks abilities to get into the formation that they want. They can just kind of move into it. So these things are great for screening because they can increase the footprint of a unit. It lets you go wider with the unit without necessarily, um, needing a reform and it you can go almost double wide because you can have up to an inch between each model. So really useful when you're trying to screen something out 
And then because you have that 360 movement and obviously 360 charges along with that, it lets you um, charge uh, out of the way of another unit um, that you were screening for. So it gives you uh, more flexibility. It gets them out of the way for you. Um, other important note here is that lone characters are always treated as skirmishers. So this gives them a huge boost. Uh, wizards with 360 line of sight and, you know, no facing and movement wherever is really big, especially when they're, say, like mounted on a Pegasus and they get higher movement and they fly and they can just go over stuff. So very powerful ability. I love it. Um, I need to get to building more models for my army that actually have this ability, but we're getting there. All right, up next, reserve move. So this basically lets you march without marching um, in terms of, uh, you know, you can get that double amount of movement, but you don't have the restrictions of the charge move. So you can like move, shoot, move. And it doesn't have to be backwards. It can be to the side, can be wherever. Uh, particularly useful if something is skirmishing. So great if it's on a character, I'm not sure how much uh, this is actually going to be on characters, but when it is, I'm sure it's going to be incredibly annoying to play against. Um, it lets you also do like a reform of some type before, um, you know, shooting or something like that. And then you can kind of reform back after. So um, this lets you protect your wizards really well. They can move up, cast spells, and then... Uh, after the shooting phase, move back. Uh, it combines well with Drilled as well, so you can do that redress the ranks for free twice uh, per turn, because it's any time a unit can move. So, you know, you can redress, move, shoot, redress, move. Again, really good. I like it a lot. And, since we were just talking about that, Drilled, the next one, it's a free redress the ranks anytime you move so that also includes um you know it, just before you charge and that's really helpful and right before you um do a reserve move all of those sorts of things it's it's just really good this lets you utilize marching columns very effectively you can deploy in a marching column and then you know move up with the marching column and then on the next turn you can redress the ranks into a combat formation and uh, you know, maximize your combat ability after that. So I think it's really great. I am a huge fan of doing this. Combining this with counter charge is just brutal. Um, you know, you, you're getting all the benefits of charging and all of the benefits of reforming and marching column. So it, again, it's really great. Um, I, I think this is really possibly the most impactful unit it's one of my favorite uh things this is you know maybe just leaning on my love of doing tricky things but uh, i'm a huge fan and finally counter charge the big thing here is that um this lets you um activate all of your charge bonuses like your lance bonuses and your impact hits on your opponent's turn when you don't actually have the charge on your turn and you have a lot of control over this because you position in your turn in a place that lets them charge but is outside of their ordinary movement so that you can get that charge off and it's um you know, you're still going to get the benefits of other things. And again, combining this with drilled, then you can go marching column across the board on the first turn. And then when your uh, opponent charges that unit, you redress the ranks with drilled and then you counter charge into them and you get your bonuses. So it's crazy it, on things that have impact hits and have lances it also just kind of like moves them back a little bit so they're not advancing as far up the field which can be useful not necessarily useful but it can uh 
do some things. It, it The big thing, too, is that it prevents your units with charge abilities like the lances and impact hits from just getting neutered by getting charged. That usually is the big thing that prevents those from being, uh, you know, totally useful all the time. So, you know, cavalry is great until it receives a charge and then uh, it, you know, you're just uh, swinging rubber lances around. So that's it. Um, that's the last one. And you'll notice the pattern in here is that all of these are movement related abilities in some way. They're all movement shenanigans, make you more mobile and give you more options, which well known that movement is the most important thing in it, pretty much any war game, uh, I think. And this, uh, I think gives you a good idea of things that you should be looking for in units to maximize your mobility that aren't things that are just obvious um, and aren't like so everywhere that um, you don't really have to think about trying to look for it. Um, anyway, um, that's going to be it for now, guys. Uh, thank you for watching once again or listening or whatever. Uh, don't forget to check out our um sponsor link down in the description for dice trade depot to get your customized dice trays for your army get your uh, army iconography your club iconography your personal thing personal saying something encouraging something threatening to your opponent whatever sounds good to you uh you can get uh beautifully done on a dice tray to have something nice and custom for your army personally i'm on a quest to just have one for every one of my armies that kind of goes like with that army's iconography as well as dice and dice bags and uh, uh i am uh pretty uh, uh i don't know it, it's over the top and excessive for me but hey i encourage people go out there get a cool dice tray don't let your dice be flying all over the board and uh, have something cool on it. Anywho, I'll talk to you all later.